Hello and welcome to round nine of the Mimic Social Simulation. This is our final round of social media influencers. Let's start out by clicking on the inbox tab to see what our tasks are for this week. If we look at our email from the Vice President of Marketing, they recommend that we continue testing to see what has worked out well, what we're still trying to figure out, and to not be afraid to try something new this week. They recommend picking an influencer from one you haven't tried this week to see if you get different results. Down here at the bottom, they also recommend that they would really like to see an increase in engagements and conversions for this week. So we might want to focus on our influencers from the past who've had high levels of engagements and conversions. So let's go ahead and click over to our results from the previous rounds. If I click on the influencer history, I will be able to see all influencers from both rounds seven and eight that I selected. I'm going to go ahead and scroll down to look at the metrics for each influencer. As a quick reminder, in round seven, we selected Chris Renald and Ryan Ball because we were focusing on that Day Packer Tom audience. Then in round eight, we selected Alex Gomez along with Olivia Gray and the World Travelers because we were focusing on the Energetic Jill and the Back to School Mindy profile. If we stay on this page for just a second longer, we can see that the World Travelers are our micro influencers. Olivia Gray was a macro influencer and Alex Gomez was a mega influencer. So in round eight, we did select one influencer from all three categories. In round seven, we had Ryan Ball, which was a macro influencer, and Chris Renald, who was our mega influencer. If I sort my metrics on impressions from highest to lowest, I can see that my three posts from Chris Renald and my two posts from Alex Gomez generated the highest number of impressions, and there's quite a large break here between Alex Gomez and Olivia Gray. Remember, this week we were asked to focus on our engagements and our conversions, so if I click over on my engagements from highest to lowest, again I see that Chris Renald had the highest engagements, followed by Alex Gomez. Clicking on my conversions, I can see that Chris Renald has the highest conversions, this time followed by Ryan Ball, and Alex Gomez moves further down in my conversions and is even on the second page with zero conversions from Pinterest. If I come back to my first page, I'll also go ahead and click on likes. Similar pattern with Chris Renald being the highest, followed by Alex Gomez. Clicks. This time we've got Chris Renald for the top three. One of Alex Gomez's, one of Ryan Ball, one again from Alex Gomez. So overall, what I can pull from this information is that Chris Renald, even though he is a mega influencer, and they frequently have lower levels of engagement. He still had the highest engagement for me. He also had the highest number of conversions. So I'm going to think about this information as I go back and decide on my strategy for round nine. Okay, let's go ahead and click on influencers and start scheduling our influencers for round nine. If I click on schedule influencer, the first thing I need to do is select my influencer category. Because Chris Renald did well for me in the past, I'm actually going to go ahead and select him again. So I'll click Chris Renald, click select. 
I'm going to try my affiliate marketing one more time. This did generate the highest number of impressions, engagements, clicks, and conversions. So I'm going to ahead and click affiliate marketing. I am going to offer $2,500 for one post from Chris Renald. I will click send offer and I have myself a deal. So I'm going to go ahead and click move forward with the offer. I can see the recap again, and I will click confirm offer one more time. So right now I have one influencer scheduled at $2,500, which leaves me with a remaining balance of $2,500. Let me click schedule influencer again. I think I'm going to select a mega influencer again, along with Chris Renald. If I scroll down and look at each of my five influencers, I can see I've obviously already selected Chris, so I don't need to look at his information again. One thing from our results was that with Alex Gomez, Pinterest generated zero conversions. So I don't think I want to select Alex Gomez or even Lily Marbles because it doesn't look like Pinterest is doing quite as well in terms of conversions compared to our other uh, platforms. So I'm going to select Kathy Berry as my second influencer. Kathy still has a large following, not quite as large as Chris Renald but a large following across four different platforms. And I've not selected Kathy Berry in the past, so this will be a good um, test to see if Kathy Berry works out for us. So I will click Select. I'm going to look through my strategy options, and I think I'm going to select Affiliate Marketing for Kathy Berry as well. This seems to have worked out well in the past for other influencers, so we'll try it for Kathy. I'm going to offer her the same exact amount of money for one post. So that would be $2,500 for just one post. I'll send the offer. And Kathy says that we have a deal, so I will go ahead and move forward and then click confirm offer. So here we can see we've got two influencers for this round. They're both mega influencers. I selected affiliate marketing for both influencers. I've used my $5,000 budget. I have a $0 balance. So I can go ahead and click my run simulation. Okay. Now I can look at my analytics. If I'm looking at Chris Renald, I can see that he generated over 2,700,000 impressions for this round. We had 95,000 engagements, almost $13,000 in revenue. If I click over on Kathy Berry, Kathy Berry created just over 1,400,000 impressions. We've got almost 15,000 engagements. Unfortunately, Kathy Berry only generated just uh, over $1,600 in revenue. So unfortunately, this revenue number is quite a bit lower than Chris Renault. If I look at my influencer history, I can scroll down. If I sort by impressions from highest to lowest, I can see that I've got three, I'm sorry, I've got four posts from Chris Renald that have the highest number of impressions, one post from Kathy Berry, and then the last two posts from Chris Renald as the highest impressions. If I click on engagements, all six posts from Chris Renald are ranked the highest in terms of engagement, followed by one post from Kathy Berry. If I look at my clicks, 
Again, the top six posts are from Chris Renald, followed by Kathy Berry. Conversions. Top six posts are from Chris Renald, and then still followed by Ryan Ball. So unfortunately, Kathy Berry did not generate a high number of conversions for me. Lastly, if I click over on revenue, five of the posts from Chris Renald generated the highest revenue, followed by one from Ryan Ball, and then the last one from Chris Renald. So overall, I can see that Chris Renald performed very well for me in the influencer rounds. And Kathy Berry and Ryan Ball performed, I would probably say, the second best, depending on which category you are looking at. If I were to click up on my rankings, let me see how round nine would rank in the class that I'm playing in. Okay, in the rankings for round nine, I am ranked number three in terms of impressions and number 16 in terms of revenue. For this week, you might want to try my strategy of using Chris Renald again. You might want to use Ryan Ball instead of using Kathy Berry. Or you might want to try using influencers that you have never used before. Either way, I wish you guys luck this week. Please let me know if you have any questions in the comments. And you can also let me know which influencers you selected and which ones are your top performing influencers. I will see you guys next week for round 10.